Hey everybody, this is Dave coming to you from the Gaming Cave. Today we're going to have a playthrough of Enemy Action Karkov. Popoff vs. Manstein 1943. Game published by Compass Games and designed by John Butterfield. And we're going to be playing the German Solo Rules. Okay, so... I've uh, got the German Solo map out. And we have... Positioned all the counters. So, as you would expect, we would do that with the um, four-digit number on the counter itself, or they go on the calendar over here for deployment. We also have placed the reserve units for the Soviets, and down here the first SS or second SS is the reserve units for the Germans. Uh, this card goes in our hand as part of the setup rules so that's one of the first cards that I get and this stack of the Soviet command cards is out because the next thing that we have to do as part of the setup is to roll and see what the first Soviet move looks like okay this kind of randomizes the game a little bit if you want it that way or you can pick one also these three um, components they have the little asterisk there so they do not get used in the game so we set them out <clears throat> and I think let's see I've already whew, got a little glare there I already have the uh, German player command cards for the draw pile the supplemental cards there and then, like I said, we're just ready to draw our hand there. But first, we need to set up the way that the game's going to go. And so what we do is, we come in here, and there are, in the rule book, set up adjustment diagrams. And so, depending on your die roll, die roll, die result one or two is the Rouse overrun, three and four. Slavyansk, liberated. Die roll five and six. Bloody Izium, that's the historical start. So if we happen to roll that one. Die roll seven and eight, the Verona's front breakout. And die roll nine and ten is drive on the donuts. So let's get the die and let's roll it and see what we're going to have. And it is a seven. Okay. Hard to see a white die on that white background. <laughs> All right. So seven is the Verona's front breakout. So I have to go through now and I have to place, eliminate these units, adjust hex locations of the units in the diagram here. Place the 40th Army Reserve unit for turn one. So I get it out. Remove one step from three Soviet units shown. Remove a step and place a disperse marker on uh, this German marker and a disperse marker on this Rouse. Place the front objective West marker. So I got to get that and place that. And then these one, two, three, four, five Soviet cards all come out. And then this shows me the two units that are eliminated. So I'll do that, and then I'll come back and we'll get a look at where everything's at. Like I said, here's, here's where we're at right now. All right. Okay, so we have everything placed. Um, as you can see, I had a Roush unit and a... 48th core unit eliminated and then up here we have pushed back one of my routes and he's dispersed but no step loss this unit this next unit right here took a step loss and he's dispersed we got pushed back and then um, three Russian units took step losses okay so we're all set up there so that 
Consti actually constitutes the first um, fit Soviet phase and now we go to okay so we're ready to begin I got this card as part of the startup um, setup hand there I got to draw three cards for a hand of four I get third core I get the 48th core and I get First Panzer Army, the 40th Corps. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is with the 57th Panzer Corps, the 57th Panzer Corps, um, I can activate this unit, or I can activate the 3rd Corps. Well, I think I want to activate the third core because I want to activate all units in that core. We want to activate all those units in that core. <clears throat> and that will allow me to move them. What I want to do is make sure I'm not going to lose my city up here. So I have what can I do here? I want to. I got a two-step. I'm going to put this infantry unit in there. He's a two. And that armor unit there. And I want to disengage him. That's two. And for the woods, for the infantry is two. So that's four. Disengage that guy. And pull him outside of that. Um, there. And then... Let's see, I'm going to cross armor. It cost me one to cross this stream. It would be two. And then to cross the major river would be another two. That'd be two, three, four. I can't get to him, but I can come down here by him and help support him. Or I bring this guy up here. Um, at least he's outside of the barrage. These guys aren't. They're going to be in that barrage area, but I do believe I'm going to back this guy out and go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that'll be my movement for the third core. And they can actually attack here if I want to. Uh, what do we got? I got seven, eleven to two. Maybe I should. Yeah, that might be not too bad. Hit that first. Hit that. Uh, hit those guys right here. Kind of stacked them up there. They're going to get artillery support, but I only have um, three chits to pull, unless I want to play a tactic with them. I don't, but you know what? Here's a chance to push them guys back out of the way. So let's give them a let's give them a shot and see what happens. Um, I'm actually going to take that attack. I wasn't thinking I was going to, but now I am. So it's uh, three chits, and so we pull for the Soviet um, combat tactic. He gets a tank brigade added to that. Okay. Oh no, that's on turn two to seven. Turn one, he doesn't get anything, so nothing. All right, so no support for the first guard army. All right, so I got three chits. My odds are four, seven, eleven. 11 to 2. Yeah, 5 to 1 odds. Why not? He's in the woods. I gotta pull two chits. No matter what. First chit. IP crossfire. Or attack not supported. No. Disperse. Or unsupplied. No. That doesn't count. Second chit. Woods. 
or broken. Yes, he's in the woods. So that's a minus one for him. And the last, I'm going to pull my third chit. It is defender dispersed, unsupplied, non supported. Nope. And defender adjacent. Ah, oh, crap. Yes. All right, cost me one. So he takes no hits, and I take a hit. Maybe that wasn't so smart, but we'll take it. Um, I believe I have to take it on an armor unit. Uh, let me look real quick. i got to find my tables now on the new sheets uh, to see if it's the same rules it was with the Soviet solo. Oh, let's see. Defender hits. I can retreat one hex, which I'm not going to do and give up my victory points there. Attacker hits. I'm an attacker. Satisfy first hit as a step loss. Up to two additional hits may be satisfied. Soviet attacker hit reduction. If all defend you reduced... Soviet attacker, no. Sorry, I'm German. First step loss must be three step or an armor unit. So I take it on an armor unit here. So I'll take it on the guy on top. Okay. So I took a step loss there. Yeah. All right. Maybe that wasn't so good. All right. Take that one off of there. And that's the end of the Soviet phase. So, or boy, I've been playing the Soviet so long. Now I got to get back on to I'm the Germans now. Okay. So we pull the Soviet. Cards, they get two. He gets mobile group pop off and third tank army. Okay, so the next thing we do, because they're both primary cards, is we look to see who's got the higher command rating, but they're both a three, so they're the same. So then we take the lower card as the primary command card. We have 13 and 17. So 13's third tank army, they become the command card. We put these down here in the holder right here. And the pop-off becomes the auxiliary card, which his combat tactic will be assault coordination. So, now, for the third tank army, the first one is activate all units in the army. Okay. So third tank army gets activated. Getting out my activation chart. Their front objective is on the marker. Is there part of the Verona's front over here? So we skip that if the mark no oh, marker's not on it. If any unit in active front occupies the marker's hex or is proximate to the unoccupied marker's hex or is adjacent, then we would roll to move it. So we don't have that. Um Movement methods, <clears throat> take a VP hex. So now we're looking at the third tank army here. There's a VP hex right here. And this goes in descending order. So we look at our highest numbers over here. He's a 17, he's a 4, he's a 24. Can those guys get down there though? One, two, three, four. No, they can't get to the VP hex. So that unit can't do that. All right. Enter empty German town, city, and less exclusive target to an inactive front. All right. So 24 couldn't reach it. 17, one, two, three, four. He can't get there. 15 can't get there, so it leaves the armor units. So we have six, or we have 16 right there. One, two, three, four. He can get there. He's not proximate to anybody, so that's one, two, three, four. And the Soviets take a victory point. Okay, so on the victory point track, we move that up to three now. So he's got three. 
Okay, took that as a victory point. All right. Other victory point hexes are going to be down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they can't reach them. Okay, so that was the only one they could reach on that one. Adjacent to a German VP hex and near an objective, move to closer to or within four hexes of front objective. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. That armor unit can get over there closer to that. Move to a hex closer to or within four hexes of the front objective and adjacent to a German VP hex. Oh, that, that they don't get there. Open supply line. Okay, spearhead excluded. Methods. Four through nine spearhead are, are excluded. So these third tank army and pop-off units are spearheads. So they are excluded from four through nine. Okay, follow movement arrows. Must start in hex with arrows and must spend all movement points moving in direction of primary or secondary. And this is in ascending. So that is this guy. So he's going to move. One, two, Three, four, five, and he can't cross the river. Must start in, in, and spend all movement points in direction of primary or secondary movement arrows. Prefer move that A ends in unoccupied hex, ends farthest in hexes from start, ends closest to objective, and he was getting there, follows primary, if move in primary direction would end before all MPs are spent while moving secondary, he would, would not move in the secondary, but that is his, oh wait a minute, there's the bridge, and he's on the road. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where he moves. Got it. Okay, so that's that spearhead coming down through there. Don't like that because they're coming up on Kharkov already. Yeah, man. I wish I'd have done that when I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> They're Soviets. Okay. Next guy. He's a three. They're dispersed, so they don't ex they don't um, have a zone of control. So he would move one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the stacking limits for him. Oh, number six would have moved. Wait a minute. Put him back. He would move. I'm going in ascending order. Oh, there's number four. He's got to move next. One. One, he follows this arrow. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now what? Number six, he goes next. One, three, five, six. Number eight, he would go one, two, 
three, four. Three, four, five, six, number nine would disengage here, two, three, four, five, Six. Now the infantry would move. Number seventeen. One, two, three, four, and fifteen. One, two, three. Four, and then this guy, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the third tank army advanced. They actually can have combat here with these guys. There's six, he's dispersed. So they might be able to eliminate him while they're there. They have assault coordination, but there's nobody there to help them with that. So we have to check them for combat. So they are... Six to two, so they're going to be three to one on their rods. Okay. So we attack. Draw a Soviet card and apply its combat tactics. Well, we already have that on the... Uh, skip if all target units unsupplied are dispersed. Play German card. Yeah, I'm dispersed, so I can't draw a tactic card. Draw your combat chits. Calculate hits for both sides. Alright. So it looks like they're going to make the attack. Okay, so they're going to draw three chits, calculate hits for both sides. All right, here we go. So this is this combat right here. Right here. So the first chit for the Russians, they have to pull one. They're going to pull all three. Attacker command. Three, four, five. Yes. There's one hit. Second hit. Second chit. Dispersed. Unsupplied. That's the attacker. Defender adjacent? No. I believe that dispersed or unsupplied actually does count because it goes against me. Attackers get, come on, there you go, minus one and the defenders take a hit. They're going to pull one more. And it is greater than five to one. No. Greater than three to one. Greater than or equal to three to one. Yes. Actually, yeah, because they were 6, 8 to 2 is 4 to 1. Yep. Okay. So the attackers are going to take a hit. So my defender hits. Retreat one hex to satisfy one hit or two hexes and disperse all defending. All other defender hits must be by step losses. So that unit, there's three losses, well actually there's four losses they're going to take. So that unit got eliminated. Alright. 
And the attackers, as you can see, if I find it right here, there was one, two, four hits on the defenders, minus one on the attacker, and one on the attacker, so no hits on the attackers. And they would not move forward, and they would not go in reverse and take move back into that hex. All right, so we're going to be ready for the uh, German command next. Okay, so for our German phase, we have three cards. We draw one. Ah, Corral. Good. I need those guys. <laughs> I don't have any reserves. I'm going to... Oh, activate anyone. Boy, that wasn't the one I wanted. I can activate... All core row units within two hexes of a hex of your choice. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to activate all core units within two hexes of a hex of your choice. Hex of my choice is going to be... Oops, a little too heavy. There we go. Right here. So if I take this hex... Within two hexes, I can get all three of those units right there. What I want to do is withdraw them, try, start to back them out. Um, not going to be able to get them out of the artillery range, but I can start to move them back here. Um, I don't want them to get surrounded or cut off up there. Everybody's in a zone of control, so they're all going to have to move out. Cost him one, no, it doesn't cost him to cross the minor river, so that would be two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. That's good, perfect. It gets me out of there. So we'll discard that one. All right, and now our Soviet cards, we draw two. And in this, in this game, we play until both sides use up all their cards. So if one side runs out and the other one's still got cards, they still go. So we have, in this case, we have no primary cards. So now we go to the command card, which is General Mobile Group Popov will be the command card. And 6th Army is the auxiliary card, which has a fixed artillery uh, note on it. So, mobile group Popov, turn 6. Nope. Activate all units in the group. Okay. So, here we go. And, because we do that, we're going to see, do we have, yeah, they still have an objective down there. Okay, but this is, again, a spearhead group. Always have to get the right ones out. Okay, so they do have a objective on the map. Those, uh... No, that's the Veranas. They do not have an objective. If any, if any unit in active front occupies Marker's Hex or is approximate reference die result. Okay. Skip if front objective marker not on the map. Right. It's not on the map. Okay, so we don't get the objective marker on the map. All right. Take a VP hex. Well, we have a unit there. Now this is descending, so the highest number on these guys. So we have eight, seven, three, six, nine. He would be the highest number. He can go one, two, what is he, infantry? Nope, he's armor. 
put him on top here. He would go one, two, three, four, five. And that gives, and that's a victory point. He goes to four. Okay. All right. Anybody else along here that's going to be able to get to a victory point? No. All right. Adjacent to a German VP hex and near objective. All right. I got to check for this objective because it seems like they should have an objective on the board. I got to look that up. Okay. I knew there was something wrong. <laughs> I made a mistake on my setup. The Veranza front hex objective should have been 1008 right there. Okay, the southwest front hex, west marker, goes in 1410 here. Their objectives are all coming towards Kharkov. Now that makes sense. That's much better. Okay. All right. I knew I had something that was out of whack. So the next turn they get objective get activated, that objective is going to move. Okay. Or a possibility that it'll move. All right. <laughs> now, adjacent to a VP hex, adjacent to German VP hex and near objective. So can these guys move? Rouse is going to block them from coming down this road here. These guys have them blocked. So they're not going to be able to get coming out of here. They're not going to be able to get down to that objective. So that one's out of, out of it. Open supply line. Okay, this is a spearhead because this is the Popov group. So we skip four through nine. Follow movement aerials. Must start in hex with arrows and must spend all movement points moving in direction of primary or secondary movement arrows. Prefer a move that A ends in unoccupied hex, farthest in hexes from start, ends closest to objective, follows primary arrows. Okay, so we got to use them all up. Now, this one is in ascending. So we did descending for number nine. Now we're going to go up. So, number one follows his arrows. One, two, three, four, and he moves into zone of control, and that's where he stops, right there. You, so he would not move there. So he does not move. Because he's got to use all his moves. One, two, three, four, and he stops. Okay. Unit number three is up here. He would come across one and he would stop. So he doesn't move yet. Unit number six. He would come across and stop. He's not going to move. Unit number seven. Now he's going to move. Looks to me like. He's going to go two, wait a minute, that's infantry, broken is one. One, two, three, four. That's where he moves. Okay, that was number seven. Number eight, he would move there and stop so he doesn't move. That's it. Okay, so we did that one. Now, what do we got left? What's next? Uh, closest to front objective. Move to hex closer to front objective. Prefer a hex closest to objective adjacent to a German occupied hex with least strength and empty hex. Now these guys would move. One, 
two, three, four, he stops. Unit number three, he wants to go to the one with the Terminal with it with least strength and it'd be hex. Well he can't get to anybody else, but he would move into here with the first guards and they would stop. Unit number six. He would cross the river. Where's where he would stop? And then unit number eight. They're at three, five. He would use the secondary. One and secondary here two, and that would put him in to that hex right there with either one of those units. Okay, so we effectively moved everybody. Unit can't leave and already tagged. Okay. You know, with one step or in a VP hex with less than three steps, can't lead against a supply target. How to check? Compare situational strength of opposing units by totaling combat strengths of lead unit and all active units adjacent to the target, and all German units in the target hex with these adjustments. Okay. So let's start with this one right here. That's 9 and 4 is 13 to 3, which is 4 to 1. Okay, 13 to 3. Auxiliary card does not have assault coordination on it, so he doesn't get the non act of anybody. Have strength units across attacking across the river? No. Nope. Add or sub to or subtract from defending unit strength for any of the following defending units. In improved position? No. Adjacent to a spike? No. Attackers across the river? No. Turn 5, don't have to worry about all German units dispersed? No, all German units. Okay. Compare situational strengths as attacker to defender ratio to determine if attack occurs. If attack is greater than 3 to 1. So we said this was. 13 to 3. It's 4 to 1. So that's it. So they're going to attack at 4 to 1. They're outside the bonus, outside the barrage, but they do get a fixed artillery attack. So they would have 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 chits for their pull. Now, for defense, I don't have anybody that I could use to reinforce. And <laughs> I could call artillery, but I don't want to. I think I'm just going to let this one go. I'm in the woods, and both units are attacking here. So it's six to one. Or I mean six chits. <laughs> Four to one, six chits. Four to one, six chits. Here we go. They're attacking my third core. And they have to draw two chits. First chit, large attack. No. Greater than seven to one. No. That one didn't count. Second chip. Only attacker armor? Yes. Only defender armor? No. So they got one there. Dispersed or uns unsupplied? No. Defender adjacent? No. Three. So far, so good. <laughs> Greater than six to one? No. Greater than four to one? Yes. It's two. That's four. I got two more to pull. 
Greater than 6 to 1, no. Greater than 4 to 1, yes. 3. Last one. German air power. Or Soviet not supported? No. Nope. Soviet air power? No. Okay. Oops. Hit my camera. These three won't count. Get rid of them. All right. So. Well, I'm not, there they are. I was like, where did my camera go? Three hits on the defender. None on the attackers. Okay, so for me, it's strictly an infantry. I can retreat two hexes and disperse to take care of two hits, which is what they're going to do. So they're going to retreat one, two, and then they have to take the third hit. Oops. And they become dispersed. Right there. Now, I have to see Soviet advance over to combat. If attacks text is vacated, undispersed attacking units may advance. Let's see, two hex advanced by mechanized units. Soviet advance, so it goes in ascending order. So we know that unit number one is first. Check units for advance one at a time. For each elbow unit, roll a die and consult the table below. All right. In the first hex, route of advance. In the first that applies, victory point hex, Primary direction, hex enabling supply, cross river and close river objective, secondary direction, second hex retreat path. So, advanced units already in the hex is zero. It, he moves automatically. So he moves up the one hex. Boom. Okay. Now I have unit nine and unit eight. So unit eight's the infantry. So we roll, and on a one to six, they'll advance into that hex. Six. So the infantry moves up. Oh, I should have checked for the... Um, for unit advancing second hex, check hex with highest chance of advance only. That's that one. It's... Don't cause... German proximity to that's turn four. Advance. Don't cause another Soviet unit to become unable to trace supply unit. So I would say that armor unit moves. The infantry unit can't. He stays there. And now I have to check for this armor unit. Um, there's only one unit there. He rolls a one, he moves up. So he also moves up to there. And they had that victory points, so we'll mark that so we don't lose track. Okay. And the question is check hex with the highest chance, don't cause German proximity to, to unoccupied Soviet. VP hit. Hmm. That's for German supply. For the second one. Closer objective attack hex. Okay. I think we're good. All right. That's the end of the Soviet phase, and we'll get ready to do our next German turn. 
All right, so we still got three. We draw another one. Ah, there's the one I needed, right there. We're going to deploy all second SS Panzer Corps. Okay, so I have I have four units. Two, three, four. So four, five, six, and nine. Those are my units that I can deploy. So now I got to look at how to deploy my Soviet or my German uh, units, so that I do these right. <laughs> Don't want to mess that up. Looking for my sheet here. Right. Let's see. Where's that? Well, must have looked over it here. Tactics, Soviet attack, chit summary, retreats and advances. Come on, where are you? Command events. Dispersed units. Active check. Placing. Oh, here we go. German standard reserve deployment within the unit's army area. Here we go. Right here in front of me. I missed it. Okay. Call me blind, I guess, sometimes. All right. I know that I want to get over this direction here. Within the unit's army area, in a supply head hex or clear head hex adjacent to a supply head, at least three hexes away from a non-isolated enemy unit, town, or city two hexes away within three hexes of a unit in the same core if not possible within three units hexes of a unit in the same army crap okay within the units army area in a supply head hex all right I gotta look into this okay luckily there's an in the rule book. There's actually an example of deploying this second SS Panzer Corps on turn one in this game. So I'm going to deploy a unit. They're going to be three hexes within three hexes of my nearest unit, which is that guy, in my fourth army area, which is between these gray lines here. So I'm going to put this unit. One, two, oh, up here. One, two, three hexes here. I'm going to put this one within three. One, two. Here's my problem right here. I can't be within three hexes of Soviet Union. I wanted to put these two units right here in Kharkov. And I can't get them there yet. So I, what I got to hope is I'm going to go two, three. I'm going to place both these units right here. And I'm going to hope that I can hold, that I can get in there before the third tank army does. But I don't know. <laughs> All right. Russians get two cards. They get. We're on his front, third tank army, southwestern front. Okay, it's the primary, so it goes there, and then the combat tactic is turn one to five tank brigade. So, first guards army, activate all units in the army. Okay, so the first guard, gee whiz, bump the camera again. <laughs> Sorry about that. They are up here. I'm going to get them on top of this stack over here so we can see them. But they're underneath these two guys right here. So there they are. And they're already adjacent to this unit. So I do not believe they're going to be able to move anywhere because... They can't take a VP hex because they're occupied or blocked. 
let's see, they can't enter the German town or city. Adjacent to a German VP hex and near objective. Well, they're not near the objective. Open supply line. They can't follow their movement arrow, arrows because they're already there. So, closest front objective, strengthen a potential attack. They're already there. Open supply line, void surround, adjacent to a German VP hex. Move to Hicks not literally surrounded and adjacent to a German. Okay. So they're not going to move. The question is, can they attack? So their strength right now is six because it's just them against seven, nine. So they're at less than one to one. Do not attack if less than one to one. Okay. So they don't do anything. I believe then they look at that event, right? Because if this card it says um, command delay. If this card is a current auxiliary card and there are four more cards in the Soviet draw pile, it's not the auxiliary card. Does not apply if not the auxiliary does not apply. Okay. So they don't do anything. So that's it. All right. We're through that turn. We'll be back to my German turn. Okay, got my three cards. Draw one. Core row. Uh, let's see. Last turn, I am mobilized. So here's my chance for core row to do something. So I think, or I can get this. I think I'm going to get my um, 57th core moving. I'm going to activate that. Uh, I'm going to activate the one unit that I have on the board. That is right up here. And he's going to move. The disengage is two. Three, four. Okay. Keep him in supply, and he's next to a road hex, which will do that, I do believe. Okay, now we draw two Soviet cards. 69th Army, primary. 69th Army, sec auxiliary. So that's the, this is the auxiliary card. And the command card is activate all units in the 69th Army. Okay, so we're going to activate those units. And this is over here. This is their objective right here. The 69th are these light colored right up here. All right, so looks like we got a couple of them that are going to be engaged. If any unit in the active front occupies the marker's hex or is proximate to or to unoccupied marker's hex or is adjacent to German occupied marker's hex, roll die. So these guys are next to that objective. And we're going to relocate the marker. Okay, so we have a table for this. So this is right here. Check active units front objective marker. And so now we check to see where it's going to relocate to. When we roll, it is a 1. In a 1, it's currently in 
Chugwev, and it's going to Valakai. Or Valky. Valky or Valky. Okay. And that is, luckily, at the back of the rule book. Thankfully, he gives us all the different locations. And Valky is 1116. And so we move this one to 11, 16. That is their new objective marker. Okay. Now we go into take a VP hex. Well, they can't take a VP hex. There isn't one there for them to get to. This is all infantry and a range of four, and they can't get around the zone of control. So we know they're not going to do that. And they're not going to move adjacent to one. They don't have an open, they already have the open supply line. Cause surround. So he can have a group move in here. He can. Two, three, four. He can't get around there. He pulls out there. That's three. He can't come back in. So one unit can move. One, two, three. Nope. They can't move there because of zone of control. So he can't call us around to a Soviet VP hex. Okay, adjacent to a German VP hex. Nope. Adjacent to a German unit in a logistics hex. Nope. Adjacent to a German unit. Move to unoccupied hex adjacent to a German unit and not adjacent to a Soviet unit adjacent to the Serb. Okay, so they're already adjacent to the Soviet or the German unit, so they can't move adjacent there. Closest German unit. So he has to come down here to get to that guy. This is in descending order. Okay. 10, 11, 12. So 12, well, he can't get down there either because he's got puts him in zone of control. So really not getting much movement here. Okay. Can't really even follow movement arrows. Must start in hex and spend all their movement points. Well, there's the problem here is he can't, he's going to hit that one. He can't, he's going to hit that one. So they can't spend all their movement points. Closest to front objective. Move to hex closer to front objective. Prefer hex is closest to the objective adjacent to a German occupied hex with at least, with least strength or an empty hex. Strengthen a potential attack. If not adjacent to a German unit, move to a hex adjacent to a German unit to which another active unit. There you go. So, and this goes in ascending order. So 10 comes first. He moves 1, 2, he moves, he moves. So there they go, they strengthen their attack. All right, and now we go to combat. And we're gonna have two, five chits. They're inside the barrage, makes it six. And he has fixed artillery, makes it seven. So he gets seven chits, makes it a large attack. And he's at, I think that's going to be nine there. Three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen to five. He's only three to one. Okay, so it's three to one. <sighs> Soviet attack. And 
and the Germans are not. They're still supplied. All attackers, Germans out of supply, no. If attacker is greater than or is greater than three to one, or all defenders are isolated. If ratio is greater than one to one and less than three to one, calculate tactical value of attack. Attack is greater than three to one. Well, he had 14 to five, which is not three to one. Okay, so it's between one to one and three to one. Calculate tactical value. Command value of activating card is a two. Situational strength ratio plus two, because it's greater than or equal two to one, so now we're four. Soviet artillery barrage bonus, five. Let's see, Soviets have armor, no, not surrounded. Flanking. So there's six. Target hex, no. And we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we're at six. If tactical value is greater than or equal to seven, conduct attack. All Soviets intact check this to check. If tactical value is less than seven, no attack. Okay, no attack. Well, that's it. All right, so no attack. Okay, got three cards, and I draw my last card. All right. There's that Panzer Corps unit. Man, I think I want to get him out of there. In fact, I know I do. I'm going to see if I can get this cat out of here. He doesn't have any reserves. Activate all units. I'm going to activate him. And get him out of that area. He's in danger of being surrounded. It's going to cost him two... He'll go, he's armor, two, three, three, wood's costing three, can't get in there, four, we'll get him out of the barrage, that's the big thing, okay, all right, Russians, draw two cards, they are, Southwestern Front, Southwestern Army, that's the primary. So combat tactics are artillery and air power. Ugh. Okay. Sixth Army, activate all units in the Sixth Army. This is their first activation. So all units, okay. So here we go. First activation for these guys. All right. Where's their front at? It's here, but that is a, if any unit in active front occupies the marker's hex or is proximate to an unoccupied, we check to see if we got to relocate it, so we do. So we're going to roll a die. This is for my southwest front, and we rolled an eight, and an eight is, let's see, this one here was at 1410. Okay. So 1410 is where he was. We rolled an 8, which moves him to Lazovaya. That's over here. Okay. So their objective is moving to Lazovaya. That's where the 6th Army's wants to go. Okay, take a BP hex. Well, they don't have one they can take. Adjacent to a German BP hex, no. 
Open supply line, no. Cause surround. Two. Nope. To a Soviet VP hex. <clears throat> Move to an empty or garrisoned um, Soviet VP hex targeted for active front unit proximate. Nope. I don't think I have to worry about that. To a German VP hex adjacent to a U German unit in a logistics hex. No. Adjacent to a German unit. Move to an unoccupied hex. Now one of these guys can do that. This is descending order. So we have eight and four, seven, thirteen. He's the highest one. <clears throat> so he would move one, two, three. Okay. We leave a garrison, no follow movement arrows. Must start in hex with arrows and move the full length. And this is in ascending, so the lowest guy. He's a three, he's a four. So he would go one, two, no. Same thing, all these guys are three. So none of them are going to do that. Closest to front objective. Move to a hex. Closer to the front objective, closest to objective, adjacent to a German occupied hex with least strength empty hex. One, two, three, four. He could move there. Let's see, this is in ascending. These would be one, two, three, four. Move. To a hex closer to the front objective. Adjacent to a German occupied hex with least strength empty hex. Or strengthen a potential attack. Closest to front objective. Move to hex closer to front objective. Prefer hex closest to the objective. So his would be one, two, one, two, three, four. That gets him closer there. One, two, three, four. And then this guy right here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That puts those guys there. All right. And he is less than one to one. We know he will not attack. Okay. All right. I've got three cards left. We have Corps Rao, we have the 40th Panzer Corps, and we have the 58th Panzer Corps. I think we will take um, Corps Rao, and we're going to move, we're going to activate all units in Corps Rao, and we're going to start with this group up here. And he is going to move right here into the woods hex with this guy. And we're not going to do anything else there so we can take that dispersal unit off of him because there won't be any other things happening there, any other movements. So he's not dispersed anymore. So we got them back. And then we have another row unit here. And they are going to withdraw some more. Do believe they're all infantry. Yep. One, two. One, two. 
I'm going to bring them down one two three I'm going to stop them right there okay that was it for Corral we draw two Soviet cards and they get Mobile Group Popov, 69th Army. 69th Army has the higher command, so it's the command card. This comeback tactic is engineers. And so, turn one to two, special NKVD operations. So let's find out what that's all about. Special events. Assign two hits to the German unit stack adjacent to Soviet units with the most total Soviet combat strength, as if combat occurred. You choose German target if more than one unit stack qualifies. Do not reduce hits in a city, town, or hex, then remove one step total from those adjacent Soviet units. Finally, if your units retreated, conduct advance after combat with those Soviet units. <clears throat> okay. We have the most, I believe, is going to be. I separated all them. I have this guy and this guy. I have that unit there that has three. Sign two hits to the German unit or stack adjacent to Soviet units with the most total combat strength. That's going to be these guys right here. Six. Yep. Yeah. Two hits to the unit German stack adjacent to those units with the most as if combat occurred. You choose German target if more than one unit stack qualifies. Do not reduce hits in a city, town, or hex. Ha! I'm in a city. Oh, do not <laughs> reduce the hits in a city, town, or hex. Then remove one step total from those adjacent. Okay, so I got to take two hits here. Oops, flip him back over. Didn't mean to knock him over. So, this was an ugly card. Each one of these units is going to take a step hit now. So, each one of them took a hit. And now they take a hit. And normally, it comes off your armor unit first. He's the biggest one, so we'll take it from him. He's a three-step unit. So that Popov unit right there is the tenth. And he takes a hit. Okay. All right. Well, that was ugly. I have... My uh, 48th Panzer Corps. We're going to activate that unit. And we are going to move him. Well, gee whiz, Dave. Watch the camera. <laughs> Gonna move six. It costs him three, six right there. Okay, I got that army unit's coming down there in the woods. All right. Next up, oh, it's the last Soviet card. Fortieth Army. Turn nine, ten. Turn six. Activate all units in that army. Okay. That's his command card. <clears throat> so, let's see what these guys are going to do. Nobody's, that objective stays the same. This is the 40th Army objective marker. Alright, so we get to place them. And you know what? 
while ago I I uh, I activated that first guard and I should have placed them at marker for them in 2102 so we're going to do that right now 2102 that's their objective up there in the city that's what they're trying to get to the 40th army's objective is 311 311 Belgorod that's where they're trying to get to okay Alright, movement methods for them. Take a VP hex. Two, one, two, three, four. They can't get there. Okay, adjacent to a German VP hex and near the objective. Move to a hex closer to or within four hexes of the front objective and adjacent to the German VP hex. Two, th I can't get adjacent to the German VP hex. Open supply line, no spearhead, no uh, cause surround, no to a Soviet VP hex, no adjacent to a German VP hex, no adjacent to a German unit logistics hex, no adjacent to a German unit. Move to unoccupied hex adjacent to a German unit and not adjacent to a Soviet unit. He's four, ten, and three. This goes in descending order. So he's going to move one, two. He is now adjacent to the German unit. Okay. Move to an unoccupied hex, German unit, not adjacent to Soviet unit, to the same German unit. Okay, follow movement arrows. This goes in ascending order. He goes one, two, three, four. And number four, he can't follow his, but he can follow his secondary one, which moves him this direction. One, two, three, four. Those guys moved that way. Okay. And so I moved this guy here, and then these two guys ended up coming down the road this way. They're coming towards their objective down here, which I'm trying to get a unit back here to defend that and slow them down. <laughs> he will not attack. He's at less than one to one. Okay, and finally we have my last card which is the 40th Panzer Corps and I'm going to activate them and they will move They're right here. That whole stack is going to move right here into the city and I'm going to hold this city right here. I want to make sure I don't give that one up. So they're, they're in there now. All right. Well, that's the end of the turn. So we get to the end of turn stuff. Check for victory levels, not till turn four. Return all combat chits. So we do that. They're all returned. Turn four, remove dispersed and forward support markers. Uh, that dispersed comes off. And I think that's the only dispersed I had on there right now. Yep. Okay. Take the dispersed off. And that's the end of the turn. All right. Well, probably a little bit longer than should be, but the rules are slightly different. And I got to kind of get back in gear now with playing, you know, the Soviets' movement um, turns and what they do. Nice that we ended kind of right there within one card of, of each other, so that worked out. Um, and I think uh, we're off to a good start. The Soviets got a spearhead coming towards Kharkov. I'm trying to get in there. I need a little luck here. Get my uh, first SS in there before they can get in there, but I don't know if I'm going to get it there or not. Uh, I sure would like to uh, <laughs> and uh, see if I can't 
fight these guys off. Okay, so hope you're enjoying it. This was turn one of the German solo. And so we're in this one for the long haul, I hope. I hope to make this a, a longer campaign than I it than happened with the Soviet. But I think we're off. We got um, a couple strongholds that we're going to try to hold on to. And we'll just see what, where it goes from here. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys for the next playthrough. Have a good one.